Um, what made me get into biodiesel? <laughs> Um, I was sitting in my restaurant one day and uh, just asked the manager where our waste oil is going and they turned around and said that the people that delivered the oil collected it too. So I looked at a bit of a gap. I had a 120 diesel BMW which I wanted to make biodiesel for and yeah in the process of phoning around the country to try and find out the best possible way to make it uh, I realized that there weren't many people actually making biodiesel in the country. February, March the following year we put it into place and we started collecting waste oil and uh, we had a little factory where we did a, a thousand litres a day processor which is really small, upscaled to three and a half thousand litres a day and uh, yeah we have a number of different clients and it really has sort of gone from strength to strength. We collect most of the waste oil from the large retailers, which we do for them on a very much basis that they own their oil and they own their fuel. Other than that, what we do is we collect from a number of hospitality establishments, restaurants, hotels, uh, etc. And basically what we do is we convert the waste oil into biodiesel. So the bigger trucks don't mind it because they all run off the big sort of yeah. industrialized engine which Rudolf Diesel originally created. And Rudolf Diesel ran his entire life on peanut oil. So the rotisseries that run inside the retailers, we take that chicken fat too which gels at quite a low level and we mix it with the waste oil and we create that into actual fuel too. We guesstimate that there is around 24 million litres a year, of which currently being made into biodiesel, there isn't more than two and a half million maximum that's being made into biodiesel currently. So if you had to take uh, an urban area that every single month uses oil to fry chips or do this or do that and the next thing, we would be able to take that oil in that community, create enough biodiesel out of it, just to run a generator for example. So we'd be able to travel into communities, um, take their waste, take their oil, take whatever they have in, in order to create it. We check the FFAs through testing facilities, very basic testing facilities. And what we do is we then move into making the biodiesel with it like this. Um, and each village or each community would have their own storage places, uh, like one big tank that would be able to store the biodiesel for them. So this is basically um, biodiesel that's separated into glycerol and biodiesel. And this is the final product. The, what we say is that you know you have a great biodiesel is when you can read the newspaper through it. So the waste oil that we get in comes in in lard that you see in those boxes over there that's just expired lard that we will then mix in with waste oil that comes in um, these drums over here from a large retailer. From there we heat it up to around 45 degrees, 60 degrees and get all the water out of it. We have the jet reactors which is our unique patented technology and what we do then is we take the methanol and potassium hydroxide mixed in the tank at the back, it gets pumped in underneath. That's the glycerol that comes out of it at the end of the day that gets pumped into the bigger tank. There is still chemical of potassium hydroxide and methanol in it. So once we've watered it down and we've made sure that we've put enough water into it to clean it out, we then dry it. It then runs through the iron exchange column and once the iron exchange column has polished it, it gets polished and it gets put into these tanks over here. And as you can see, there's nothing in these tanks because we, are, we cannot keep up with the demand at the moment. In that pipe over there, you can see biodiesel in it, but you can also see glycerol. Now the glycerol is sat down at the bottom. We take the waste water and the glycerol, mix it together, and with intellectual property and a patent that we're just busy putting through that's pending, uh, we've created a, fertile, a liquid organic fertilizer. We add a couple of nutrients in, but at the end of the day, it's a liquid organic fertilizer that will mix with chicken manure that will be able to be used again with very high carbon chains back in the soil. So anything that we try and create, we try and create a closed loop on anything that we do. Um, for me, it's about, uh, not for me, it's for my kids and their kids and just to make sure that they can still have a planet that is habitable to live on.